Sarah Mariahler on Solace. I'm uh, sorry about the light, but this is all I'm working with, and it's quite cosy as well. You will never guess where I am. I'm very excited to be here because it is no accident that I've called myself, I've branded myself Sean and Shanathi, because I live in Port McGee, and over the mountain there's a place in Banskelligs called Kildrelig. And there was a master storyteller there, Sean O'Connell, who lived, he was born in 1893 and he died in 1931. And from 1923 onwards, uh, Seamus de Larga, a man from Antrim, initially he came down to learn Irish from Sean O'Connell because he wanted really, he didn't want to learn book Irish anymore, he wanted to be with the people who spoke Irish. He met up with Sean O'Connell here in Kilreelig. So he started learning Irish, but very quickly he realised that Sean O'Connell was a storyteller and he had a wealth of stories and folklore and information about the area and how places got their name, all these kind of things. So he started writing these down. I'm not too sure when the book was published, but he published Lower Hyon O'Connell, which is the book of Sean O'Connell and all his stories and his wealth of knowledge, which is, it's, is really fantastic because A, Sean O'Connell didn't speak any English. We share kind Gwelga on Tamarfad. He didn't read or write. He was totally illiterate. And then he never really left this hamlet. He might have gone to Karsveen once or twice in his life, I think, I'm not too sure. But most of his life was just spent in this hamlet. But he had gone around gathering stories. He would have gone to the next village or whatever, um, gathering stories. And storytellers would move around and he would gather stories off them. So much so, I've been doing a little bit of research and somebody was telling me that he would often be seen chatting away to himself. But what he was actually doing was retelling himself the story so he would remember it. It's through a shin because I would love for him to see that he's not forgotten and his stories are not forgotten. And there's a book here telling his stories. His stories have been told in America, they've been told in England, they've been told in the Czech Republic, they've been told so many places to so many different people and enjoyed by so many people. So I think I'm going to work on something about that legacy that I've taken on from Sean O'Connell and that I'm, I'm hoping to, to share and to move on and put my own um, stamp on it, I suppose. So Seamus de Larga started writing up Sean O'Connell's stories and he very quickly realised that there were so many different pockets around Ireland with these wonderful people who had so much knowledge about folklore and the older generations and the pagan times that this all needed to be gathered, written down, collated and kept. So it is so amazing that I am sitting in the place where the Irish Folklore Commission was started, was thought up by Seamus de Larga, who went back to Dublin. He was, he was a professor of Irish. He was a lecturer and a professor of Irish, and that's why he came here. But then he went back up and he trained in Switzerland, I'm almost sure, and came back and became a professor of folklore then after that. And he started the Folklore Commission, which was a standalone project, which was gathering uh, folklore from all over the place. They did the schools project, and all that, all that started from where I'm sitting, which to me is so exciting. And again, it's only by going back and reading Seamus de Larga's account, Sean O'Connell's account, and listening to people who have other accounts. Um, there's so many little anecdotes that are beautiful that I'm gathering as well now. So it's, it's a great place to be. Kilreelig is now. So the Kilreelig project, started and rebuilt Sean O'Connell's house and many more houses in the village. And these houses are there for as an artist's retreat. So artists from all over the world have been coming back and staying here, doing some work. Then they can donate some work if they like to the project. And the project then has a gallery and craft shop restaurant down in the village where the public can kind of go because up here it's, there's, a, there's a different vibe for want of a better word. It's, um, it's isolated in a very beautiful way and it's untouched and it's just so perfect for inspiration and creativity. Not for everybody, I can see some um, 
city people might take a while to adjust, but it is fantastic. And so the project is spearheaded by Noel Campbell Sharp, and there's a lot more people involved as well, but she's really the one that has has taught it up and ha had the, the foresight to put everything together in place, and it's absolutely wonderful.